Hello, welcome to this uh, next substance designer tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to make uh, a procedural wood essentially. Uh, so let's get started. Now, before I go too much further, I'm going to just rearrange my UI here. So this library I hardly ever use, so I'm going to close that. And I'm just going to click and drag the uh, 3D view down to the bottom of that column there and then the 2D view below that and that's going to give me a, a nice amount of space to work in. I can always extend these over a bit if they're a bit small and I'll just collapse that a little bit. There we go. So file new substance graph uh, we'll have a metallic roughness and I'll call it wood and everything else stay the same and click OK. There we go. So now I've got a nice, uh, nice big sort of uh, graph area that we can uh, we can work in. Okay, so <clears throat> what we want here is um, some straight lines, and these are going to form kind of the grain uh, of our of our wood, uh, or rather, in this case, it's going to form a very broad grain for our knots. So let's uh, press spacebar and type in Annie. So anisotropic noise is going to give us uh, a noise which is very much uh, directional. Um, it's a little bit, how can I put it, variegated. I want it to be quite sharp and clean. So I'm going to turn the X amount down to zero. You'll see as I have a more increased X amount, it changes the color more frequently uh, along the line. And if I have it down to one, it's one line. Uh, the Y amount I can reduce a little bit perhaps because uh, this isn't going to be our final grain texture. This is just kind of big, um, uh, large features if you like. Okay, so let's uh, come out from that. Uh, what I do want for this though, because I don't want these to be completely straight, I want there to be some sort of element of uh, you know organicness to them. Uh, I'm going to pop in a warp node. So we'll pop in a warp node, plug that into the input and then I need something to actually warp these so we need some sort of noise and I think I'll go for a Gaussian. So Gaussian noise and then just pop that in there. If I double click we'll get the preview. Uh, that's you know way out, that's uh, way too intense. So I'm just going to bring that right, right down because I just want them to be a little bit wobbly and wavy. There we go. That looks nice. <coughs> okay. Right. So uh, if our wood were just straight, you know, lines, it would be uh, a bit rubbish, really. Uh, so what I want to introduce to this is um, some knots. So I want to um, warp this pan. Um, around some circular kind of areas and we can do that with uh, a tile node uh, so we want the tile sampler and we're just going to change our pattern to uh, a parabola a paraboloid uh, we'll take our x and y down a little and then we're going to adjust our positions. So let's set the position uh, random. And I just want to break it up so it's not, you know, all in straight lines. Uh, I may want to actually change our sizes here a little bit. And if I increase the scale, and uh, I want to then change the x random there, just to a little bit of variation. I want them to be taller than they are, um, you know, wide, because yeah, you know, I want them to be stretched. And you know, knots aren't all perfectly circular. They're generally, you know, a little bit, um, a little bit off, shall we say? Okay, so that's uh, a good start, but um, it's too. How can I put it? Um, the shapes are too defined. Uh, they might not look defined, but when we put them through, um, you know, when we add them to our lines, 
they're all going to come out with lots and lots of little circles essentially so we want to blur this up so if I would press space and blur I'll use the low quality one just for now and I'll increase the intensity a bit so I get a little bit more of a kind of well yeah I'm going to say organic again I'm going to say organic a lot in this uh, a bit more of an organic -y pattern now the only problem with this warp is um, it's pointing the wrong direction uh, so I'm just going to go back to my anisotropic and just set, rotate to true so now this should be up and down you know our uh, obloids here or paraboloids are up and down and that should match up nicely there we go so let's blend these together no I don't want to blend them together at all I just want to warp them um, <coughs> yes and now I can't type excellent brain has gone so let's pop that into the uh, input and that into the uh, gradient input and now you can see we've got these nice kind of wood like organic -y, wavy uh, patterns but what I actually wanted to do is I, I want some of them to kind of fold in on themselves and form uh, little rings so for that we're going to take the intensity and jack it up if I set it up to 10 you'll see we start to get that uh, and if I reduce it down we'll get a slightly more uh, isolated we won't get quite so many knots uh, shall we say <coughs> excuse me okay so uh, once you've got to a value you're happy with uh, I'm going to leave it at somewhere around 4 um, we need to sort of go on to the next step which is to um, perhaps isolate some of those nodes um, because you know we're going to isolate some of these nodes so that you know we're not picking them all we don't want them all there are too many uh, so we're going to cut it down a little bit and then mix it with a, uh, a more fibrous pattern okay so we'll do that in the next step and I'll talk to you okay so I've just moved my nodes you know away to give myself a little bit of space and now we're going to start to isolate our um, of the bits that we want to be uh, knots so if I hit a spacebar here and then type in histogram or hist uh, I want a histogram scan now I've used in the past many many different ways of doing this I've used curves uh, I've used the levels node but you know this seems to be a slightly more straightforward uh, so if I plug a warp into the histogram scan and increase my position it's gradually going to reveal more and more of our uh, knots and if I go right to the top it's going to be completely white and I want somewhere where we've got a few isolated ones and some nice black spaces where we can add some actual kind of directional wood grain uh, we could change the contrast so if I can increase the contrast on that it will change ever so slightly but somewhere along those lines I think okay so let's uh, visualize what we've what we've got uh, first of all I'm going to take that output for an histogram scan and pop it into the normal and now you can see I've just switched over to a rounded cylinder here uh, so I can you know go around and have a look it's quite I find it a little bit easier to see um, than the cube the cube has a lot of flat plane uh, whereas this is just one smooth kind of uh, you know uh, circular cylinder sweep whatever you want to call it okay so uh, to further enhance our visual uh, representation here I'm going to delete this uh, uniform color input to the ambient occlusion which is now going to shade it completely black uh, but then if I press space and type ambient and then plug my height map into that and plug the height map into the ambient occlusion that will then 
calculate that out. Now the what the ambient occlusion map does essentially is takes height map and finds the differences in the height and where there is a difference in height it puts a little gradient around the outside. Uh, so as you can see here it gives you a nice representation of what's going on. You can see where the differences are and it, it just highlights it very nicely. Uh, we can change the height depth on that so we could take it up and it will become uh, deeper and darker or we can take it down and it's become more subtle and we can even reduce the radius so that the uh, that gradient doesn't spread out quite so far okay so that's essentially that bit we've isolated our nodes we've um, got the visualization going um, just at this point in time of course just because we're at this level doesn't mean to say we can't go backwards you know we can go backwards and alter any of these to change our endpoint so if I double click on this uh, don't really need to double click on it sorry double click on this ambient uh, scan to visualize it and then single click on the anisotropic noise uh, I can change my values and I will get a different result at the other end. So you can adjust it to, you know, get it to a point where you like it. We can even go onto our tile sampler and perhaps change the X amount and you'll get another different result. Uh, we can change our size random. So, you know, just because you've got to the end of something doesn't mean to say you can't go back and change it, you know. If at this point in time it's not how you want it, change it. Simple as that. Okay, uh, similarly on the warp you can change that, you know. We can reduce that down or increase it up to get the kind of thing that we want. And I quite like that actually. That's got quite a lot of black in it and a few knots. That's quite good. I might actually increase the position scan here. Or adjust it at least to get a little bit of variation in there perhaps take the contrast up a little and that will isolate some of the uh, lower values and there we go and that's what it looks like not too bad at all okay so uh, we need to add some additional kind of noise to this um, it's all a little bit uh, even though we put this little warp in here uh, it's not really um, intensifying it very much. Uh, we could go back here actually and change the scale. If I change the scale, crease it up, and then go back down. We get a little bit more wobbliness, uh, but I want to add a, a little more. Uh, so in the next section, we're just going to increase the noise on this to make it more naturalistic. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, so I essentially want to smear this in a particular direction, you know, up, down, left, right, you know. And uh, for that, I'm going to need some sort of noise. So let's press space and type noise. And we can have a look down here and see what we've got. Uh, I want something quite contrasty um, and something quite soft. So I'm going to go with black and white spots one and we can mess around with this uh, but I'm just going to leave it default for the moment. Uh, I'm going to put it underneath uh, because now I'm going to add a directional warp. So this directional warp is going to take our input from this which will decide the strength and it will take this input here which is the image we want to blur and then we can have a look and see what it does and you see it's you know just kind of messing up the edge uh, it's a little bit strong so if I double click on the warp uh, I'm going to take the intensity down and you can see as I'm doing that if I take it to zero and then sort of take it up to one or up to max it's warping it in a particular direction it's warping it from uh, side to side um, what I want to do is have it warping up or to down or down to up whichever way you decide 
Uh, so let's put 90 in there. That's pointing up. And now if I increase this, it's going to warp it in that direction. And I don't want it to warp too far. So we're going to reduce our intensity down just to start to break up those edges. There we go, somewhere around there. So let's uh, actually let's make life easier for myself and put the blend in here. And we're just going to plug that into the top. And I'll plug that one in there and that one in there. And now this is what we're getting in our uh, output, which is looking quite quite nice. Okay, so next we want to start to add a little bit more kind of finer detail to the non-knotted areas. Uh, so when we come back in the next section, we'll have a go at that. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, so I want to add some noise onto this. Uh, so let's just move this all to give me some space. And for this, what we're going to do is add a directional noise over here. So press space and type in direct. And we we'll use directional noise one. And I'm going to just warp this first. So type space and then warp. Plug that into the input. And we want our kind of blurred circles here to drive that warp. Uh, this is going the wrong way at the moment. So let me turn this 90 degrees. OK, so for these two, I need to blend these two together. So let's do that with a blend. There we go. And I'm going to leave it uh, with just a copy at the moment. Uh, but what I'm going to do is use my directional warp to drive the blend. If I simply plug it in, you'll see what happens. I get quite a nice texture actually. Uh, but we can refine that even further. Let me plug that in down there. So now I'm getting you know, some directional noise uh, over various things, but I'm not getting it across other things. Uh, I know things, it's a very technical term. Uh, but I can further dictate how that happens. Um, so if in here, for example, uh, I put another histogram scan in. And then in this histogram scan, I can increase the position. And essentially, I'm increasing it to include only the bits that I want. And if we compare this one, let's uh, make our 3D or 2D a bit bigger. So this was our original, and this is our new one. And this is then our revised texture. Now I've got you know um, grain in some places and not in others. So let's move that down a little bit. There we go. And if this is kind of the wrong way around for you then you can always select that noodle and type in invert and you'll get the inverted version. Uh, I rather think that that's not necessary in this case. I just want it to be like that. So now I have some smooth areas of wood and I have some rougher areas of wood and it's all kind of being driven from the same place, which is essentially our tile uh, sampler back here. And let's actually do some messing about down here and see where we get it. Let's take the size down. I want to elongate it a bit, so I'm taking X down to kind of stretch those little points. There we go. Let's take the general scale up a little bit. And we can get some really kind of funky stylized and you know more, you know, how can I put it? Interesting effects that way. <laughs> Basically, you can mess about with it as many ways as you want. You know, once you've got your graph kind of set up and it's you know working for you, 
you can always go back and adjust things to you know to you know make a slightly different texture or even a very different texture uh, for example in the uh, anisotropic lines you know if I do increase the X amount what happens it goes really nuts if I reduce that back down again you know what's going to happen if I just raise it at just a, a much smaller amount say to six uh, we can increase the Y amount and that's going to increase our kind of rings and all sorts of things so you can do all sorts of stuff you know once you've got a pattern um, and then you know you can adjust it and move it you know it's not a formula for creating one particular output it's uh, a whole kind of formula engine where you change one input at one end and then the output at the other end changes out again okay so uh, enough of me waxing lyrical um, I think that's quite nice I'm looking at kind of a rough um, walnutty was walnut is that the right word I don't know really no more words I don't know what I'm talking about um, but a rough kind of gnarled you know um, piece of wood you know out in the wilderness nobody's cut it or you know done anything crazy with it it's just you know <coughs> a rough wood okay so uh, we want to add some final level of detail across the hole now um, so we'll do that in the next section okay so the next thing I'll do is fill in these blank spaces uh, I've got quite a few of them and that's fine uh, but I don't want them to be there <coughs> But I don't want to overwhelm them either, and I don't want to get rid of the original pattern I had. So first of all, I want to create a new directional noise. Uh, sorry, a new uh, yeah directional noise. Sorry, I thought I was talking about a warp there. And I think perhaps let's have a look at scratches. See what that does. There we go. Uh, so I can increase the scale and the disorder. Uh, we could put a little angle randomness into it just to give a more fibrous kind of look uh, and I want to warp it again um, in the same way as we did this warp so I'm going to select that warp node and press ctrl D and just move it up and then plug that into the top there we go so now I have uh, another warp and I can alter my intensity a little bit now I want to blend it with this but I don't want to overwrite what's in here already I want to add to it um, so let's put a blend node in if I put that in the top and that in the bottom I just need something to blend them together so if I take this node um, and I want to invert it so let's type inv and then pop that in there and then I can pop that in as the mix and that's what I get which is not really what I want um, something's not quite right here what's going on I'm barely seeing anything well first of all my scratches are in the wrong direction I need to rotate those 90 degrees there we go and then let's see what we've got now let's just plug that into the output so it's a little bit more clearer yeah see my noise is completely overwhelming the um, the pattern underneath so what I need to do is between these is put a levels and now I can adjust my levels to increase and decrease the strength so if I take my white down we should start to see that coming back round let me select this uh, blend node to um, visualize it a little better and I'm likely to need to take this down very very low so you've got hardly any color in this now it's you know, hardly any intensity I've got color but not intensity and if I come back here and I start to look at my wood up here we're getting um, yeah the right kind of effect I've still I can still see my uh, layer underneath but I'm also getting like a generalized grain across it uh, I think that 
this scale is wrong uh, so I might need to make it even smaller perhaps not that small though there we go somewhere around there I think that's what our map looks like and that's what our blend looks like um, this invert is a little bit impractical um, let's see what modes we've got abstract and then no that's the wrong one oh it's just an invert so I'm going to put a histogram and uh, histogram scan in between these two and then really control where I'm gonna have my blend there we go if I increase the contrast that should sharpen that up a little bit and now yeah we're getting more of our not detail uh, than we are our uh, you know our fiber detail <coughs> now one of the things that kind of bugs me about this is that my original um, kind of grain not original grain but uh, this noise here uh, is of a similar scale to the other noise uh, so I'm going to actually really increase that to make it much much finer to have a difference between the outer and the inner I hope that makes some sort of sense to you right let's uh, expand this out sorry if you heard the motorcycle outside I live on a not a main road but a busy kind of uh, rat run if you like uh, which is a little bit annoying sometimes uh, la, 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 la. where are we there we go yeah uh, I'm pretty much liking that that's pretty nice as a rough kind of uh, unfinished organic -y wood goes um, so let's um, let's have a think about this so I want to organize this a bit better before I go on to the color and we'll do that next I'm just going to group these things together so that it doesn't look quite such of the uh, you know I've just thrown things onto a onto a graph uh, without thought okay so uh, I will talk to you then okay so let's uh, organize these together so this first bunch is going to be my basic kind of shape let's move those up and those ones too there we go so this is my base to this point so I'll select them all right click and add a frame and we'll name that uh, wood, base. wood base there we go <coughs> let's move those up there for the moment so these here are going to form a chain uh, I want to get all these blends into a line uh, kind of a line so you can kind of trace the evolution uh, so these ones here will be my uh, wood uh, wood grain one as it were so let's uh, right click and press add frame and this is wood grain one and then these final ones here so that one, that one, that one, that one, and that, whoops, I'm not selecting them. <laughs> Those and these, I can't reselect, never mind. Uh, so those will be add frame and then wood grain two. And then I can just drag that one up there, make this perhaps a bit wider and pop that one in there there we go so if you further want to make it a bit clearer you can change the colors so if you select a frame you can select a new color for it or for it there we go and now you know we can see that this is our final one which is leading into our texture and you know that's how we're going to use it now you could publish this now uh, as a kind of material or a pattern um, but I'm going to add some color into it and you know see where we go from there 
Uh, so we'll do that in the next bit and I'll talk to you then. Okay, so what I want to do now is add some color and for that we're going to take a grayscale image and we're going to apply a, uh, a blend to it, not a blend, a gradient map. Um, so I found in my experience um, that the more detailed your color map is or your grayscale map is, the, uh, the harder this is. So previously I may have used my final um, map to drive the colour uh, but now <laughs> I realise that perhaps I was making my life hard by doing that. So what I'm actually going to do is take one of our previous maps and this one obviously is not far off our final one and that's a levels node. This one is completely unhelpful uh, um, but this one gives me quite, what would be quite a nice height map. So what I'm going to do is change this using the ambient inclusion node. So if I press space up here and type in uh, AMB, and I'm going to plug this into this node. And now I get this more subtle variation across everything. And I've even got a bit of grain in there, perhaps where I don't want it. Um, but you know that I think that's going to add a little bit to the graininess of the texture so I'm going to have kind of broader uh, colors here which don't change too much and then I'm going to have finer colors that change a little bit more okay so uh, we can adjust this of course so I can make that uh, variation there different by extending the uh, the gradient and then we'll add in a, a gradient map now, uh, prior to this, and you might have done this earlier, but you can do it now, pause my video or something, uh, I've gone to get a um, nice um, image, or I want to get a nice image from um, the internet somewhere. Uh, so if I type in wood uh, uncut, there we go. And then I'll go to my images search and see if I can pick out something. Uh, oh, this isn't working. What's going on? Did I press the wrong button? Ah, I'm already on images. There we go. So we've got all sorts of nice woods here. And all I want is one that's got a bit of variation to it, a bit of uh, interest. And this kind of orangey red-ish wood here I quite like and I've got some areas where it's more yellowy and some where it's darker and more uh, orangey and that's a pretty good place to start I think. So, uh, oh, lots of darkness in there but never mind. So I'm going to dock this off to one side and then dock this off to one side and on my gradient editor I'm going to use the pick gradient tool and I'm just going to start this off and draw a line across my picture and it's going to pick me out a gradient. Uh, now obviously I don't have to stick with this gradient, we can do other things but let's have a look see what it uh, see what the results like. Whoops, make that full screen and oops this is all scrunched up. If I pop that into the color output We'll see what we get and actually it's not that bad it's a bit light for my tastes um, but it's a pretty good option let's draw that out a bit uh, so on this uh, gradient editor there's various things we can do uh, we can increase the precision of that stroke or we can decrease it and decreasing it's going to give you fewer colors uh, and increasing it will give you more of course um, but you, know, you can usually find that somewhere in the middle is about where you want it. And we can of course change the position of these. We could drag colours out if we wanted to. And I'm just looking to have them kind of in a more linear uh, order. So my lighter colours are you know, at one end and my darker colours are at another. Uh, there's even an option where you can invert the positions, so you switch it round, see what that looks like. That doesn't look great. 
uh, so I'll invert those positions again uh, we can even select all of our nodes here if I can remember there we go select all and now I can darken them up or lighten them up I can take the saturation out I can alter the hue we can do all sorts of things uh, but actually I'm, I mean this isn't uh, by any means perfect so I'm going to uh, try and select another one so let's dock that off to one side again and where are we pick gradient and let's go for all one of the darker colors uh, somewhere in here there we go and then when we come back oops that's what we've got now again not ideal not perfect uh, but you know you can change this ever so slightly by increasing or decreasing your positions and then maybe reordering or even removing some uh, of our pieces uh, I'm going to invert the positions on this one and I think that's a slightly better result let me move that up to get a bit better view And then I'll select all of them and I'm going to take some of those colors down a bit it's getting better a bit more uh, maybe take some of the uh, whoops that was a hue I don't want to take your hue out because <laughs> you can't uh, so I'll take the saturation down and that becomes a more looks more naturalistic to me and yeah that's a, a pretty nice wood the only thing I'm really concerned about is these white oh, not white but lighter patches so what I'm going to try and do is to take whoops <laughs> delete the whole thing I didn't mean to do that uh, so I can select a key and drag it off and I think it's going to be these ones at this end if I put that right to orange down to dark we're getting a kind of a more naturalistic colour put a little bit more into that one it's changing ever so slightly I'm just attempting to darken these up to you know find the key that's actually driving that uh, that very light colour so let me drag that out and that out I'm gonna need perhaps fewer keys up this end to find this there we go it's starting to kind of even out a little bit now okay so you know experiment find the color you want find the color you need um, and then you know perhaps invert it change it do it all again uh, let me invert positions again see what that looks like yeah I really don't like that one uh, so I'm going to invert that back again there we go okay so that's uh, uh, basically a procedural but when we come back we'll perhaps uh, update some of the other channels uh, roughness could probably use a bit of uh, work um, and then we'll publish it and see what we uh, yeah see where we go from there so i shall talk to you in the next section okay so what I want is to uh, update my roughness and currently we're at this kind of mid grey which is going to you know just make it fairly generic uh, but what I want to use is back in our kind of original wood shape here um, our original kind of shapes I want those to drive how shiny or how uh, dark something is or how uh, matte something is so I'm going to pull that out and I'm going to switch this to or connect this to a curves or a curve node and then we'll plug that into the roughness and immediately we get a difference I've got some very sparkly shiny bits and I've got some very unsparkly kind of flat bits uh, but the reason I put this into the curves node is because I want to change this a little bit so if I click into the graph or double click into the graph and then uh, delete that node I want to take the top part and bring it down and that's going to take out most of the very harsh whites that we have 
and if I take the bottom and pull that up it's going to take out some of the very harsh uh, blacks till we get to a point where it's kind of somewhere in the middle for everything and it's just a question of finding the spot you like so there yeah. see that's not too sparkly it's not too um, you know too matted we're getting quite a nice reflection off it and it looks like uh, some well something like wood anyway there we go uh, because it's you know uncut wood uh, we might actually want to take that because it's kind of a raw straight off the tree look uh, we might want that to be a little less shiny than that so yes it's going to be according to your taste essentially uh, but I want there to be some variation and if I take that up we'll get a little bit more variation whereby the raised bits our original wood will be very dry and our uh, underwood where you know we've just got our grain on is going to be somewhat more shiny there we go what else do we need well what we don't need uh, I think is metallic there we go we don't need that uniform color we don't need that uniform color either so we've got our color node the only one we haven't really utilized is the height I can plug my output to the height map and essentially nothing will happen because we haven't updated our um, material so if I go to the material default and edit I can come down to our uh, height and increase the tessellation and increase the height so you'll see now that most of that height is actually going inwards uh, but we only want it to go a little bit I only want it to move a little I don't want it to be you know so exaggerated that you know it doesn't really work so if I go really high you'll see that we have this fuzzy monstrosity um, and in fact it might be that this isn't the right map to do my height uh, it could well be this one let's pump that one in there instead that's not much better let's delete that node let's try this one back here that's a little bit more broad uh, and broad is what I want so let's go back to our um, material edit and now I can just take down uh, the height scale there we go till it's as I want it so I just want it raising the you know the, the knotted areas and leaving the other areas slightly recessed let's take that to 0 0.2 there we go okay so all that's left to do is really publish it um, so uh, we need to save our package first so it's right click uh, sorry right click and uh, save and I'll call this I don't know uh, reddish wood would you reckon two D's in reddish let's uh, use my new folder here and then right click again and publish the SPSAR uh, will generate our missing icon hopefully it will give us a nice little icon uh, yeah, yeah <laughs> kind of uh, and then we'll publish there we go job done so now you can drag and drop that onto your material library um, in substance painter and use it as you wish um, if you want to um, make it more usable within substance painter for example uh, in each of these nodes that's driving our pattern you can expose these parameters so if you expose these then you know that will expose within um, substance painter and you'll be able to adjust it within substance painter 
Uh, I might demonstrate that in the in the last bit. I thought this was the last section. <laughs> we'll do that in the next bit. Okay, so I shall talk to you then. Okay, so uh, one last quick bit then. So in this tile sampler, for example, uh, we could expose our X and Y amount. Uh, so if I expose as new graph input, um, on a label to be, um, let's call it knots X, and then uh, we want that to be a slider, and everything's okay, so we'll click okay there. And we'll do the same for the Y. Uh, so expose as new parameter, we'll call this knots Y. And then say OK. Now I just need to republish this now. So if I right click up here and republish SBSAR file. Now I need to go and find that in my uh, browser. Uh, so YouTube, new folder 2, perfectly uh, labelled. And then we shall go to Substance Painter. And then do the waiting for substance painter dance, which is extremely enthusiastic until it actually opens up. There we go. Okay, so first of all, I need it in my library. So from my folder, I need to drag and drop that in. Whoops, I right clicked instead of left. Uh, I'll just put this into my current session for the moment as a base material. It's going to filter my library and show my wood. And we'll just open a sample, perhaps the tiling, and get rid of all these um, presets in here. Let's get rid of those, and I'll drag and drop my wood onto it. There we go. Now uh, you'll see it's a bit overburdened with uh, <laughs> with height, so I'll just sort that out by coming over to the material settings and uh, increase my tessellation and decrease the scale. Even smaller than that, I think, more than five. There we go. It's looking a bit more uh, like mud at the minute, so let's make that even smaller. There we go. Now, um, the demonstration I wanted to make was that we should have some parameters in here that we can change and as you can see under the material we have parameters knots x and knots y so as i change these it's going to update my texture accordingly and give me lots and lots of different effects so basically within uh, designer uh, you can expose anything at any of these levels that you you, know, you have an adjustment option on and feed that into your material and then it becomes a bit more you know flexible to use within painter uh, so i hope that makes sense and um, yeah i hope you enjoyed that tutorial and i'll talk to you again in another set so thank you very much